Hi guys, welcome to Legion Live. So uh, this week I am joined by Idik Beer. Hi guys. And then next to him we've got Mike. Hello, hello. Not even bothering with his channel name. Uh, just <laughs> below me we've got Tabletop Banter. Hello. Uh, next to him we've got Phil. Down that way. Uh, all the way over there we've got the Warp Forge. Hey, hey, hey. And down the bottom, all the way down there, uh, it's a packed show, so we've had to take up a whole extra line. We've got Dice Miniature Painting Guy. That's Hello! Down there. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> okay, right. Um, something worth mentioning at this point, I haven't changed Phil's name. Your new channel name is FK Wargaming, is that right? Yeah, FK Wargaming, that's correct. Okay, well, I'm going to... Uh, change that in a moment anyway it's all right great thanks because I'm, I'm that professional <laughs> <Very good. laughs> right <clears throat> so there there's our intros we may as well go into the first section which is legion and channel news right okay wait <laughs> <laughs> let's kick off <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna yeah, start I, with I think one next, who's laughing the yeah, most. <laughs> yeah, next time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm gonna pick uh, Callum to go first because he seems to be enjoying himself the most. Yeah, I did. Yeah, no, it's lovely. So, okay. Uh, <laughs> right, what's been going on on my channel? Well, um, plenty of things have been going on. I've got some new series lined up that I've been recording. Um, been very busy painting, so hopefully get some showcases up. Um, as well as that, I have actually released the book I was writing, um, Crash Landing on Kakarius. So that's on the Tabletop Hunter blog um, as a free PDF. I've also awesome. got a little page on there for like uh, buying primed miniatures and stuff now as well. So uh, um, that's, that's just a little endeavor I'm trying out as well. So yeah, it's been a pretty busy time. Uh, lots of building, lots of painting. Plenty of recording as well. It's all go, go, go. It is indeed, yeah. <laughs> Probably shouldn't be. I've got exams soon. But uh, everyone needs a distraction. So. <laughs> yeah, That's true. Yeah, Procrastination is, uh, winning. is the key. It's winning, indeed. Right, uh, I may as well go next. <laughs> uh, if you hadn't noticed, I've made a return to 40k and gone a bit mad on the old Dark Eldar and spent lots of money and been busy, busy, busy painting it all up and converting and etc, etc, etc. Yeah, I'm going to try not to neglect everything else that's on the channel because I know I've got subscribers who uh, enjoy that. So uh, I'm going to try and get back to that sort of stuff. But I am well and truly into my Dark Elder at the moment. So that has been my time since the last show, which has been quite a long time, three weeks. It's a long old time. Who wants to go next? Don't, don't all jump on it if you want. I'll go. Um, yeah. Go for it. Um, I've been very, very busy, but only literally on one project, just my Space Wolves. Pretty much every waking hour, probably chance I've got is painting those. Desperately trying to finish them for the end of April, uh, for the Achievable April Challenge. Um, it has been a challenge, but I'm definitely getting there, so I, I think I'll be able to uh, finish, hopefully in time for the, the challenge to finish. But yeah, that is literally what I've been doing, just painting Space Wolves. There's worse things to be doing. Yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> Work. Right. We may as well start from the top and go down. So, uh, Mike, what have you been up to? Finished the Bloodthirster, which I'm pretty pleased with. That came out oh. nice. Been really busy in work there, but I've been building um, stuff for Dead Man's Hand. So I've been knocking out the uh, foreground scenery. I've built the... Uh, there it is. The are old, those uh, ones that are pre-painted, are they? Or? Yeah, yeah. It's it's the livery for that's my cool. for my stables that's going to be on the next... To... Um, go on. I was going to say, are you going to weather those up? Uh, yeah, eventually. Some eventually yeah, it's, it's just kind of getting them, getting them built, yeah. getting the board made. <laughs> and then once the board's made and the, and the uh, kind of terrain is on... I'll start weathering the buildings up then, but uh, but they look pretty good to be fair. I mean, they're they're really yeah. usable straight out of the box, to be honest. Definitely. So that's what I've been doing. I've cleared all of those, so it's on to painting now. Next, I, I'm deciding what to paint next. I'm sort of looking at the stuff. Went to salute as well. That was really good. Oh uh, um, yeah. So yeah, yeah. 
Anybody else go to salute or just smoke? I didn't, yeah. I managed to go in the end, so... Oh, good no, thing. I didn't go this year. I'm going to try and go next year, I think, hopefully. But we'll see. Yeah, definitely. It looks, it looks better and better each year, so that's pretty good. Yeah, I'm not allowed out very much. So. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll see. Right, uh, FK... Egypt tour to salute. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've been working on my um, Black Shields army. Really, the the Void Scorpions, and um, I managed to finish one one squad, the the Terminators, and so on. I'm sure you've seen the, the videos and so on. I've sort of finished off uh, yes. these guys, um, and I've sort of moved on to um, a tactical squad um, and an assault squad. So, sort of slowly working my way through those. So, are those thirty so, k, or are they just a yeah, it's all thirty k, yeah, basically thirty k. Um, yeah, 30K, 30k Black Shields, if no one knows, they're basically sort of non-Legion sort of troops, so they're, they're their own army in their own in their own backstory and so on, so right. um, yeah, it's pretty good, so you sort of create your own Legion for 30k, so that's good. That's cool. Yeah. Right, uh, what Forge, Jacob? Oh, yeah, I haven't been doing much because obviously like deadlines are looming in, but I've managed to paint up Deadshot, which you can see in the latest Arkham Files video. Uh-huh. Batman miniatures game. In addition, mistakes were made in the start of start of the army as well. This time, it's Renegade Knights. Oh, nice! <laughs> yeah, right. and, uh, basically, I just looked at the rules because it's literally like three pages of rules. It basically just says maximum three knights and then allies with Chaos Marines and Renegades and Heretics as Battle Brothers. In addition, orcs can be allies of convenience with these guys. And I just thought, hang on. You can have two Gatling cannons, so I was just thinking, why not have two Gatling cannons, the giant rocket on its back, because nothing screams Michael Bay more than a few <laughs> hundred <laughs> and big-ass guns, so That's true, yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> okay, and last but not least, long-time Legion member, first-time Legion Live guest, we've got uh, the Dice Miniature Painting Guy. You been up to much this week? Yeah, a lot. Uh, hello, guys. A lot of uh, Blood Bowl. I have a lot of Blood Bowl going on. Um, Dark Eldar. And <laughs> random pieces. I, just a lot of projects. That's cool. Yeah. It's, always, yeah. it's always good to have a nice nice variation of what you're playing with. Yeah, I, I, It's a problem too, because I, uh, I got these ogres and want to uh, do grotesque on. Inspired oh, right. by someone here. I can't slay. I, I do not want to slay these ones because I, I do oh. pay <laughs> hordes as well. Ah, <laughs> but, I've, got, uh, I've got I've got the same model in my hand. Isn't it? Yeah, cool. <laughs> uh, he's the only oh, one who survived. Good... What? <laughs> no, you're saying that, that that's the only one that survived because he's got that cape on his back. Yeah. The, re- the rest of them <laughs> got much. converted. No, 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 I'm not converting anybody of them. They are going, they are staying like that. I must admit, they are really nice models. Yeah, and because they're made. They are really solid, good uh, gaming yeah. pieces too. In the game, because they're solid plastic as well. They've got a really nice weight to them. It's it's yeah. really strange. If this was made by GW, it'd be like five pieces of hollow plastic all glued together <laughs> with seam lines and all that sort of stuff. And these are just like. <laughs> Solid. A chunk I, of... yeah. <laughs> I might just convert really everything I build out of uh, hordes miniatures. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good use for good use for hordes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I guess we may as well move on to the uh, talking point, which is topic for discussion. Right. So this week's topic for discussion is. Basically about paint, um, painting miniatures, that sort of thing. Um, so the first talking point that we've got for for tonight is the importance of painting miniatures to us personally. So um, what sort of onus or importance do we put on um, getting our miniatures painted before they hit the table? Personally, um, I think that it's a very important part of the hobby to me. I mean, first of all, I love to paint. so. There's always going to be like, okay, I understand that I'm motivated to paint before I play, but I know a lot of people aren't. Um, The importance, personally, is I think the 40k for me is like a visual thing. Because when you see models on a table, 
and like the terrain's really nice the models are nice you're just like oh this is so cool uh, i wish i wasn't there because that would not be the place i'd want to be <laughs> but it's that kind yeah, of immersive yeah, feel to it um that i really really enjoy and there's nothing worse than just looking at the other side of the table and just seeing all gray unless some yeah. of the, the paint unless scheme is gray so yeah unless they're space yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, obviously. Or, yeah. or Grey Knights. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Unpainted. Any, uh, regard, yeah. Do you think anyone's ever done Grey Knights and literally just left them bare plastic and painted on details? <laughs> I'm sure they have. Probably, yeah. Well, I know someone who's played Red Scorpions as Grey Plastic, so... <laughs> and said, yeah, I've pretty much done them now. I was like, have you? <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Um... <laughs> But yeah, I think it's a very important part of playing the game. Um, so I try my very best to have everything painted before I play. Um, it makes for difficult gaming, though, because a lot of people are like, oh, if you're not playing 2,000 points, I'm not interested. Mm. And that's just our local meta is like that. So when I turn up with, like, 500, 750 points of painted minis, they're very much like, well, you can't play. So I find oh. that people do, <laughs> I find that people don't have it in the same regard as i do but to me personally point painting minis is quite important but i don't know if all of you share the same or differing of course i think like for me it's i'm the guy who usually brings all the unpaid minis so, <laughs> so that's why i'm uh. kind of just trying to get all the paint on where i haven't done battle reports for a long <laughs> long time because i'm just busy painting i suppose for me it might be a little bit different because i'm entrenched in so many games i mean i'm starting infinity in the next weekend <laughs> so uh, all right it's it's kind of daunting, especially when you play Orcs and you've finished like a squad of five Meganauts and you think, I've got 45 more of the little things to paint. Yeah. <laughs> so that, and it's like all my Chaos and all that, I'm rebooting my whole Chaos army for Night Lord specific only. In addition, I've got Horus Heresy on top of that and it's, it does feel overwhelming at times, but you've just got to kind of like block it out, just paint it. And I think my meta is a bit more forgiving on the paint painting schedule so it's like a lot of people still play as regardless of painted or painted minis it's just uh, when it comes to reports people are a bit like finicky but aside from that it's like i suppose i should i'm very grateful for the matter that i'm in i think a lot of people are like that um mm. i generally try to play the, the minis that i've got painted and then if i can't quite make the points then i will throw uh usually black primed miniatures on the table mm -hmm. yeah it's my stuff's generally built and primed black straight afterwards, so everything just stays that colour. Yeah, yeah, a lot of a lot of my stuff is just just primed. Oh, it's it's sits primed for a few weeks or anything else <laughs> before getting further on it. So it yeah. sort of shows shows yeah. willingness that, that you're actually going to paint it at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Made a start somewhere along the line, so that's good. Yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. that's the, like the the difference between like painting and showing the intent to paint and not yeah. painting at all mm. is quite different. So if someone's like playing primed minis or just base coated or something, I'm not so fussed because obviously they're making the progress. It's a hobby, you take it your own speed in that. But it's when someone's got like bits of a space marine that are all plastic and he's missing an arm or something, he's like, yeah, this is my captain. And you're like, um, <laughs> <laughs> not really sure I'm supposed to believe that, to be honest. Like, you know, a bit, a bit of love and care yeah. is required, I think. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, you know, <laughs> it's probably a talking point for another episode. But uh, for me, almost WYSIWYG is almost more important than painting, or as yeah. important to be honest. I'm uh, kind of being able that. to de being able to determine what the opponent's <clears throat> using and what you're what you're aiming at is uh, is quite a big thing. I think. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In terms of painting, from my point of view, I've um, I've actually changed because. Um, I think now that I have a lot of my like percentage of my armies painted, I'm actually in a position where I can say I will only paint with painted models. And if I need a new unit that I want to play with, I can take my time and paint it and get it ready to play. But I've been very much in a position in the past where I've painted, uh, played with unpainted models with no qualms at all, both me and my buddies, and it's not really had any impact on me at all. Um, but having the, the YouTube channel has totally changed that because um, obviously the battle reports do look a lot better with painted minis. Mm. And oh, if yeah. you look at some of my old battle reports, like with, when I was, when I first started, I was playing my Aldar and I pretty much had nothing painted. And it's quite quite nice watching the battle reports over the, the years and you can gradually see the army being painted. 
Um, yeah. But definitely now, um, I don't play with anything that's unpainted. Um, a, because of the, the channel, and B, because as most of my armies are painted now, I just feel like, you know, I don't want to. But I don't yeah. have anything against yeah. unpainted playing, because at the end of the day, you're just playing a game. Um, you know, so as long as everyone's having fun, that's the main thing, really. True. I mean, not much of my stuff is ever actually finished. <laughs> I will say that. Everything, I, I generally paint to tabletop. Um, so the whole of my Dark Air Eldar army is painted to tabletop. And what that means is it looks, from two foot away, it looks finished. But as soon as you get closer, you start noticing that the, uh, the vials of liquid are just black, for example. Um, and certain attachments haven't got any silver on them, that sort of thing. So yeah. the closer That's you very get, you do notice actually. it. Yeah, because I, I, am, I have to finish my, my models before I can right. play them. But, obviously, I am going to be painting my Dark Eldar, and that's going to be a lot of points I'm going to be painting. And my aim is to paint it in a month, the whole army. Um, right. And, obviously, from, from my point of view, obviously, I do try generally to paint every model to the best of my abilities. So <coughs> the Dark Eldar thing is going to be a total challenge, because I'm going to have to do it the yeah. opposite way around, a bit like you, where I'm going to be doing like, the majority of the stuff, but not having it so I can play them. And they're going to look painted, but not necessarily finished. So that maybe yeah. in the future I can go back in and do the extra stuff there. So it's going to be a challenge to myself to, to not <laughs> paint to the highest standard that I can. Mm. Yeah. What I find is if you're looking to paint something quickly, like to a deadline, if you actually just paint everything one... If you, if you say you prime it all at once, you've got a whole black army, then you want to um, pick out the base colour for the majority of the armour, for example. I'll do that. And then I'll work on uh, everything that's silver becomes silver on the whole army and everything that needs white on it becomes white in the whole army. And I do it that way. So yeah. eventually, when I get to a stage where I've got three, four, five colours and a couple of washes on, from the distance you'll be sort of playing with the army, it looks completely painted. But of course it's not. It's missing quite a lot of the, the details. But you have like 20% uh, to your finish. 80% are well, done. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, batch painting, yeah, batch painting. It's a good way to do it. Exactly. It's it's just a a, yeah. a completely different way of painting it. It's how I painted a, a lot of the stuff that I've that I've got here, and that way I was able to paint racks at the same time as the Kronos paint engine because the armor is the same color on both. Mm. Um, the bone is the same color. The skin is the same color. So every stage that the racks went through, the the Talos paint engine went through the same stages. Mm. That's yeah. basically how I, I, I get things yeah. done. Well, that's literally, uh, yeah. That's sorry. literally what I'm going to do. Is going to uh, coat them all black. I'm going to go and pick out the orange highlights. I'm going to yeah. do the skin. Probably do some metal work on the guns and stuff. Give them a wash, and then see how they look from there. Mm-hmm. And you'll probably find they look like really decent from uh, from a from a distance. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I've been told that about myself, funnily enough. <laughs> You look decent from a distance. From a distance, yeah. You can just stand back a bit, that'd be great. Yeah, would you mind uh, just... Yeah, awesome, that, that's it. Uh, right, just uh, take this opportunity to uh, do a little shout-out. In the chat, we've got Fire Breathing Duck, we've got Tattoo For You, we've got uh, Tabletop War Zone. Yeah. Um, that seems to be all the people who have said hello so far, I think. And uh, excuse Ma- me Mac Neeser. Oh, okay. Fantastic. Uh, welcome. Um, if you're watching, I know we've got uh, just over 10 people watching. If you uh, if you want to throw a hello in there, we'll uh, we'll say hi back. So the next point to uh, to cover that I've got down here is um, we're going to go more into sort of the paints themselves. So we've all got favourite paints and, and favourite paint pots and that sort of thing. Um, so we just wanted to cover um, that as well. I'm going to keep an eye on the time this week because we went uh, well over the other time. So, um, yeah, who wants to jump in with their favourite paints that they use? I'll go first. Uh, I think my favourite is Vigello's Game Colour range. I think it's mainly because it's cheap. You can just squirt it out in a bit. You don't have to, like, get it from part have the potential to damage your brushes as you're brushing mm. it down onto, like, a palette. You just squeeze it down water it down with a little bit of water 
and then apply it as you go. And the amount of colours that you can get, it reminds us a lot of the old Citadel paint range, which I enjoyed a lot, especially for stuff like the turquoise, which looks exactly like hot turquoise and stuff like that. Yeah. But I mean, apparently, yeah, I mean, there's a little story. Apparently, like, game colour was going to be the uh, original Citadel paint range, but apparently, Citadel found a different, like, company to do them and oh, apparently, right. cheaper price. So basically, you kick the uh, game colour people out and they just start their own range, and hence why some of them. Some of the names sound very much or very similar to the uh, original Citadel paints because, like, it was meant to be like a cheeky little ode to them kind of thing. I must admit, I always thought that Citadel, because they they've been making them since before I even joined the hobby, like fifteen, twenty years ago, or however long it was. Um, I almost assumed that they made them themselves and they had a whole factory going with paints and stuff rather yeah. than going to another company. That's really strange. That's the I just assumed I that all along. I and almost then, assumed that uh, that Citadel started three. off as a paint company, to be honest. Mm, yeah, I think maybe that's what they're doing with their, with their new range of paints. I think possibly, maybe, yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, well, talking about Games Workshop paints, um, that's basically what I use. Um, the main reason I only use them is because it's very, very convenient for me to get those paints. Um, mm -hmm. I have nowhere locally that I can just nip in and pick up a, a game colour paint, for example. All I can get my hands on is the Citadel stuff. Uh, so I've been using that for, obviously since I started. On the whole, I am happy with their paints. I think they do have some really good paints. Um, they have some, In the new range, there are a couple of dodgy ones. Um, I don't like the new black, for example. That's rubbish compared to the old Chaos Black. Uh, yeah. It's very, very thin. Um, and the white tends to go quite yeah. well. So th there are definitely some issues, but on the other side of the coin, some of the paints are actually really, really awesome. Um, I have like, done some online orders for some game cutter paints um, as replacements for the old paints, because obviously I'm going to keep some of the colours the same. Um, and if I had a local store that stops them, where I could just nip in and pick up a pot of paint, I would probably go for those. Yeah. Um, so that's that's the re reason why I stick to GW really. But interesting, we're talking about paints. I, I went into my paint pot to get my uh, riser rust out today, which I've only used three times before. Um, it's now in the bin. Um, <laughs> it's gone all Shocking. right. Yeah, I, I mean you put it on the brush and it's it's just it's horrible. It's like yeah, <laughs> it's in the bin. <laughs> so that was a bit. That, it's a bit oh, disappointing well. when that happens. And I also find the rune fang still, um, that goes quite off quite quickly as well. I've got to really, really mm. shake it. Okay. Well, that personally that for me... Dry, dry oh. brush. Nick, isn't that a dry brush paint? It's supposed to be a lot thicker, isn't it? Yeah, but it's, it has gone off, though. It's nothing like oh, it right. used to be. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, for me personally, I use a mixture of uh, model colour. So the Vallejo model colour, because I'm a cheapskate. <laughs> And and I then, um, let's find a good example. Here we go. I uh, put my Citadel paints in dropper bottles. <laughs> because the, the problem I have with the Citadel paint pots are they dry out really quickly. And also, I'm really clumsy, so I knock them over. Um, <laughs> whilst I'm trying to yeah. use them, I can't get into the bottom. You damage a brush and stuff. So to be able to put them in dropper bottles and just go, like, put a drop on the palette is really handy. Um, I think in terms of the two paints, the Citadel ones are nicer. They are twice as expensive for half as much paint. So yeah. four times more expensive. Um, so I'm starting to lean towards Vallejo a lot more. Um, just as easy to use. Just um, The yellow the yellow I use seems a little like... It feels plasticky, which might sound odd. But when you mix it with a bit thinner, it just doesn't lay down a very nice coat. Um, yeah. I found myself using five or six thin down coats just to get a solid application of yellow and even then it's a bit dodgy but um but definitely yellow I... is dodgy. sorry after you <laughs> uh, the the yellow colors are dodgy whatever brand that is yeah. true yeah i have heard that it's one of the slightly and most annoying ones to paint other than white on anything other than a white primer <laughs> yeah. um but definitely putting citadel paints in the dropper bottles has made my life like 10 times easier and I don't have any yeah. problems with separation and drying out because it's all sealed. 
So you know. I would, I would like to do that to my uh, my aging paint set, but if I were to try and do that now, it literally would not fit in the end of the dropper bottle. It's so congealed and lumpy inside that I'd get very <laughs> little paint. It's it's awful. When I'm when I'm painting, I'm basically my paintbrush is like scraping the side of a paint lump. Just to get some paint on the end of it so I can use it. Oh, yeah. it's so oh, terrible. You so can buy slowly, a new one. Yeah, I'm slowly <laughs> making the change to model colour. I think there's, there's three of us for Vallejo. Um, Vallejo! Um, but I'm also, yeah. I've, I've also got things like the um, the quick shade from um, yeah. Army Painter. Um, but not the sort of big tubs, just the little dropper bottles. Um one thing I will say, as much as I don't like the paint pots that GW use, the um, the little lip that's on the lid as you lift it up is fantastic for if you just want to do like one paintbrush worth of paint. If you just missed a spot on something uh, and you just want to dip your paintbrush, paint it, you can't do that with the uh, the dropper bottles. You've literally got to squeeze out like a whole drop just to paint like the tiniest little bit. So that is a, a, a downside to using the uh, the droppers. But Saying that, they probably still last longer, even with yeah. the, uh, the the extra wastage of having to take a drop out of them. So yeah, I was going to say, like roundabouts. having the little drop is uh, much better than having a half a dried out paint pot. Like <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. around. Talk, talking about old paints, um, I'll put this back on the video again. So uh, this is yes. um, some really <laughs> old school uh, Games Workshop paint. So I think, I, I think the design of that pot was probably quite well done, to be honest. Yeah. Considering yeah. people have got the old paint, tubs of last year's. Yeah, it, it, it's lasted ever since I've had it, and you can see it's still still paint in there and bits and pieces yeah. like that. So, um, yeah. And not so the I, company. I had, this, had that when I was uh, when I was a child, and then obviously had a hobby break, and then come back, and it's still still wow. okay to paint. So. I think the price of the paints are, are okay if um obviously if if, if it's gonna last twenty years or something like well, that. Yeah. <laughs> it probably yeah. pays for itself. Obviously don't paint enough. <laughs> <laughs> not in not in that colour anyway. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> to do a Nurgle army or something. I can see why that's <laughs> yeah. what, what were you gonna say, Kim? Uh, that is uh coat the arms. It's made making arms, those yeah. paints and it can buy them. So that's yeah. who they used to use, is it? Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're the same company, and they oh. produce that paint still. Huh. Okay. Well, there you go. If you like that, the... look them up. Yeah. So, yep. so that's yeah. Co coat of you arms. Was that coat, coat de arms? De arms. Yep. Coat de arms. Coat de arms. Okay. <laughs> Sounds a bit French. Make a note of that. <laughs> like, so does Vallejo. Does all the paint come from France? Random question. Um, Sorry. <laughs> all of the paint in the world. I think so, yeah. yeah. I have heard rumors. <laughs> Every of single drop, even the stuff they mix down the down the local shop. Oh yeah, definitely, uh, yeah. Like being Q and yeah. There's a channel that runs under all of the countries from France. And it just pumps out into the separate locations. Um, yeah, just lots of oh. tubes, one one tube for each colour. Yeah, I wasn't supposed to tell everyone that, but <laughs> <laughs> in France. Yeah, someone's gonna be knocking on your door now, Callum. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Uh, um, you don't see me for a few weeks. I've actually fled the country. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on that random tangent. Um... I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm a fan of the Games Workshop uh, paints as well. To be fair, like Nick, it's. I mean, I've, I've been painting for a lot of years, and when I was a kid, the Games Workshop paints were the only ones that were available. So you kind of mm. start with those, and I've just continued with those through through adulthood as well. Although saying that, I did a video on it a while back when they changed the entire range, you know, back in the day when they had the old Chaos Black and the old Bolt Gun Metal. Gun you know, metal. And, yeah. and, and, they, and they, they changed the whole range, didn't they? And, uh, mm. and none of the colours are quite the same and okay. made the decision of whether I was going to stick with Citadel colours or move over to Vallejo or whoever else, but uh, made the decision to stick with Citadel. So I'm quite happy with it, to be honest. And like Callum, I, I do a lot of airbrushing as well. So put Citadel paints in the dropper bottles, and I've got a, a rack of Citadel paints in dropper bottles. Although you can get um, Citadel airbrush paints now, can't you? But in the same... In the pot, uh, yeah. In the pot, is, so... Yeah. so yeah. ridiculous. I would, still transfer those. <laughs> yeah. I would still transfer those into drop bottles. <laughs> do, they sell like, do they sell pipettes that are ridiculously expensive no. as well? Oh, they don't work. They're missing a the trick there. One use pipette. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. Uh, that is That was a really daft move for them. And to be honest, it's probably just going to be um, 
mm. watered down paint at the end of the day, isn't it? It's exactly what it is. Right, I mean, yeah. I, I, when, when I transfer the normal Citadel paints into dropper bottles, I'll mix it with airbrush thinner so you can so get I, all the yeah. paint out of the pot and then mix it in the dropper bottle. And I, I inadvertently picked up some Fenrisian grey or something the other day from Citadel and it, the airbrushed version mistakenly. And it's exactly the same. It's, it's just that. It's just thinned down. Normal uh, Citadel paint, I'm sure. I mean, it, it's the same sort of consistency that I make with thinner. So, you know... But either way, but I say that I will use the Vallejo stuff for priming. I, I prime all my stuff with an airbrush and uh, use the Vallejo blacks or greys um, rather than the rattle cans. I think I need to start doing that, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> it, go, it goes, it goes, yeah, it goes far. The, um, the through an airbrush, at least anyway. You know, you get a big, the, the larger tub of pr- of uh, primer, and it, yeah. it goes quite a way compared to the rattle cans. From you know, my experience, at least anyway. It definitely sounds like something to do. Right, um, yeah. uh, just didn't to have a bit of a tangent here. I've noticed we've got Big Mac Dunskull. We've got uh, Shellshock M3, Wargame of Sean. Um, mm-hmm. Am I forgetting anybody that's, that we've seen in the, the chat? We've got uh, Fire Duck. Is it Fire Duck Studios? Duck Fire? <laughs> the, the Duck. Duck Fire. Fire. Um, fire. fire Breathing yeah, Duck. Fire, fire, fire Breathing Duck. There we go. How awesome am I at uh, talking? So good. Uh, I am sitting in an underground bunker, in case you were wondering. It's true. Now this is this is a shed, which is uh, yeah, Close. it, lo- yeah, it looks like I'm in a still. strange space station or something. It's it's quite weird. <laughs> this is home. <laughs> uh, um, I guess we've got time. Uh, we were basically just going to cover this if we had time and the last talking point i've got down here is um painting methods now we have covered a bit of this actually um when i was talking about how i go through um all my miniatures at once you know production line kind of thing um so i guess i guess we'll cover how we paint them. i mean this could cover things like um how you build up your layers as well because the way I've approached my Dark Eldar is actually very different to, I think, how most people do it. And essentially what I've done is I I start off with the black, and then I do a heavy dry brush of dark green, and then I do a light dry brush of bright green. And that is basically the armour done. Yeah. It gives me the, the dark bits, it gives me low lights, it gives me high lights, um, mm-hmm. and it's all got a perfect blend to it. And... They say one of the problems with dry brushing is it makes the colours quite cold, and that works brilliantly for for Dark Eldar if you want to have like a nice sort of subdued colour. And it works from everything, from the smallest miniatures all the way up to the the big tanks. That 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 um, that technique that I've used. So that's that's I guess is one of the things that I wanted to uh, share that I'm doing. That's quite strange. I think I don't think I've ever seen anybody paint an yes. army in that way. To be honest. <laughs> Yeah, G- GW in the in their white dwarfs as well have started mm. using um, dry brushing as a as a, an, yeah. a alternative to edge edge highlighting oh, right, stuff yeah. on on the marines marines and stuff. It's a quick quicker way of doing marines and bits and pieces like that. They they gave an example on the on the um, calf calf marines, both ultra marines and world bearers. So um, mm. it's a technique I tend tend to use as well a dry brushing technique to sort of rather than edge highlighting everything so um i i tend to do that on quite quite a few few of my models and so on so i think dry brushing is a good technique to use yeah it's surprising what it can do i mean i was literally going from very dark green to uh like bright green and there's just the variation of color i've got on yeah going from that that dark color to the light color you'd think i've used wet blending and about four different paints and it's perfect for me because of the colour blindness. I can't see these four different paints. I can't tell which one looks similar to the other. So if I'm just playing with dark green and light green, I don't get confused. I don't need to care if they look the same colour to me. I know they are. <laughs> and that's all that matters to me. <laughs> Simple as. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've um, done 
Well, okay, I've been I've been in the hobby again for eleven months, and my painting has changed so much from the first brush stroke to now. Oh, I can imagine, yeah. Uh, and I mean, like, so much. The first video I ever did was talking about how I paint my minis, um, and that was eleven months ago. And I look back at it, and I'm almost tempted to get rid of it because I just would never say that this is the way to paint a mini ever again in my life because it was so bad. Made it- as long as you made it clear that, that that you weren't telling people to paint that way, then it's fine. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> I might have to go and put some kind of like screen up saying, hey, "Please ignore this." <laughs> yes. Um, because what I used to do was just sort of a base coat, and then I used to fit really thin down black paint with water, and just sort of like s- slap it on like that, and I'd be like, "Oh, look, I'm done." Um, and it was really bad, so I don't do that. Mm. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> what I do now is sort of um, what I'm between at the moment is building up a simple base coat, using some appropriate washes. Some areas I don't bother washing it. I try and be selective as well. So like I used to just wash and then dry brush and then that would be it. So, but now I'm trying to put the washes in certain places um, and not washing some of the armor plating. Lots of edges, but they're all curved. So it just kind of rolls nicely. Um, yeah. But for a lot of more rugged miniatures, like my guard and that, where they're wearing more cloth, I'll always do a, di- a dry brush. Because I find that with some kind of with a rippled cloth texture, a, dr- a dry brush just seems to look more natural. Yeah. Also, it's a darn sight easier. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm yeah. not going to exercise like, every single ruffle on that shirt. I'm just yeah. no. <laughs> yeah, um, I just had a, a drop of frames, 500 frames. So that was potentially a couple of seconds. So, I guess apologies to those guys watching. There will be there will have been a gap somewhere in there where we all just froze in place. So, uh, <laughs> Get it on purpose, sorry just about saying. that. Yeah, I just got alerts <laughs> popping up all over the place. Your computer's crap. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it seems to have passed now, so we should be stable <laughs> from this point on. It should be okay. I think also it, it's worth maybe mentioning um, brushes as well. Um, oh, yeah. The current range of GW brushes are um, really good brushes, um, and especially their, their dry brushes dry brush brushes um yes so it, it depends on the paint that you're using and the brushes at the end of the day as well is, is what mm. end results you get so um <laughs> as kim well, showing, as kim say, showing yeah. off a few paint uh, paint brushes there yeah. go through there but yeah yeah now, i i can't disappointed in the new dry brush to be fair really? it's huge it's massive yeah <laughs> i only used the uh, only used a small one because, uh, as you say, the even the medium one seems quite large, but um, yeah, the small one I, I did quite a lot with. I I, I tend to use. <laughs> uh, brushes. I think we've all just grabbed a brush, haven't we? I've yeah. Got one. <laughs> <laughs> I've got four. I've had real trouble with the. I don't know whether this here with the orange end on it and the black main bit is citadel's current brushes but i have a real trouble keeping a point on on these brushes yeah you would well, not believe yeah how do you clean, I... how do you clean your brushes how do you clean them Water. Yeah, i don't i don't lick them <laughs> honest um, <laughs> <laughs> however, so, yeah. Yeah, saying that no. uh, that might that might be the problem um but I've got some army painter ones that seem a little bit better. But recently, um, I can't remember what I was watching, but somebody said that basically with the thickness that we've got our paints at, you don't need to go for modeling brushes. What, what you might be better off going for is watercolor brushes mm. yep. because of how thick we have our paints these days. So yeah. I picked myself up a three slash zero round paintbrush from Dalla Rowney. I don't know whether that's a good brand or what, but it's absolutely fantastic. It's unbelievably good at keeping its point and retaining paint and, and everything. It's just head and shoulders above anything else I've used. And it's literally just a, I would call it an average priced watercolour brush. Mm. And it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, I th- yeah. so I think there's something to be said for that. I think fine tip paintbrushes, and this is one of the thicker tipped ones, and it cost me three quid. Now, I know they're going to break. I know they are. But what I'll do with that is it cycles onto a dry brush. That's true. Yeah, you, know, you, can, you can recycle I've, brushes for multiple purposes. So I've, I've chopped even the thinnest brushes to make an absolutely tiny dry brush in the first. Yeah, 
I've done yeah. the same. Yeah. Because this is the this is the small dry brush from Citadel, and I cut it down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was way. It was just too big. I took my hobby knife to it, and I was just shaving bristles off because it was just way too big for what I wanted it to do. Mm-hmm. Which was just dry brush some bronze on like a one of the lapel bits on a on the power arm of the edge. It's all mm-hmm. I wanted it for, and it was just massive. <laughs> I was like, I just painted them again. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I don't think I've ever thrown a thrown a brush away. I've always just kept kept them and used them for, as you say, like dry brushes or whatever. Or Stirring paints. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> paint on the palette or something it's never for yeah. a paintbrush away i know always got yeah i know what some people use for clean brushes is absinthe apparently that's uh, a cleaner okay better than that's drinking oh, yeah. uh... that stuff is horrid oh it's the devil yeah. it's the devil <laughs> <laughs> it's like drinking like plastic bags <laughs> it, it has its uses yeah, it's like yeah, cleaning you, paintbrushes, obviously. <laughs> it's like when you're little, you like put a plastic bag over your head. It's like it's like drinking that. It's like the horrid experience all over again. Well, that's uh, <laughs> I think we've seen some childhood trauma coming through here. Childhood. <laughs> I'm not going to it, but uh, absinthe is the devil. But it makes oh. a great cleaning product. That's okay then. I'll, I'll keep that so, in mind. So going back to painting. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> So what, what I found also like Callum, obviously Callum only eleven um eleven months did you say, so yeah. Yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. So obviously I've been painting for for many years, but um the same scenario, you know, my painting obviously has, has changed over the years dramatically. Um but what well the way I sort of tend to do it is every time I'm painting a model I'll try and like a, a single new technique on that one model. Yeah. And then so I can master that like extra technique. And then once I'm, yeah. I'm used to that one, then maybe in the future I'll try another technique and then like, gradually bring all those new things together. So rather than trying to get guessing a model and say, right, this one I'm going to do some wet blending and I'm going to do some freehand on this one and I'm going to do some edge highlighting. Do you know what I mean? So you do all the stuff that you're familiar with and then say, right, on well, this one I'm going to have a go at doing freehand. And that will be your new learning thing for that particular model. And then gradually, each time you do models, you'll gradually pick new things up. So that, that's how I've sort of built up my experience as such, doing uh, extra techniques on each one as I've sort of gone along. Yeah, Yeah. funny you should say that. I was literally, the steps I've taken in the last 11 months have been from base coating to dry brushing a highlight, including washes, now edge highlighting, airbrushing, like freehand wet blending stuff like that and so it's like i've leaked it in slowly yeah Probably and exactly like you, saw, you talk about edge highlighting like uh, marines you know where you do the shoulder pads you know it's like yeah, one, it's one line. <laughs> well that's yeah one line that's a good starting point but yeah. now I'm, I'm doing three like highlights on my space yeah. you know yeah. so and you just gradually add more depth up. to the model each time you do it yeah but it, it is just yeah. just learning that's all it is just yeah. going for it and having confidence in your abilities, really. Yeah. I, I guess I'm lucky in respect for my development in painting because I went to the Washington Model Club back uh, when I was smaller and stuff, and through the last 10 years, I've met loads of uh, proper modelling painters who like just paint up dioramas <coughs> and stuff like that, who've won awards and been seen in multiple magazines. I mean, there's a guy called Pete there, I think, and he did like this big uh, Judge Dredd miniature and stuff. And, he, and, he, and they all were quite helpful and used to help us out with like painting techniques and stuff. So it's oh, like if he did reptilian like crocodile skin for Killer Croc, they help us out just mix up the paints. Try this. Oh, Dredd's great. He is the <laughs> I think yeah. it used to be like that in GW as well. If you went in and uh, started painting something in the corner, someone would usually come across and uh, give you a hand. I don't think I've witnessed that in a while. Yeah. What I have witnessed, funnily enough, is them going, I think you need this paint. Uh. <laughs> Are you buying that? So you want this paint and this? <laughs> yeah. And you'll want to dry brush that area there? Have you got a dry brush? Yeah. Would you like to know more yeah. about this paint? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Very true. <laughs> um, let's. I'm going to put this out to you guys. Far is away. taking a pen to your models, so not a paintbrush, but a pen, sacri- sacrilege? Is that against everything you stand no. for as a human being? 
No. Hey. <laughs> it's like, I remember like watching somebody on Twitch because Twitch people <clears throat> usually do like live streams when they paint minis and those Mm-hmm. A thing called Silver Foxy Tail, painting this uh, these sisters of battle for commission work, and she was using oh, yeah. I can't remember what they're called, metallo pens or metal or something or M paints or something like that, just like oh, these yeah. pens and for like parchment and stuff for writings and like inscribe mm-hmm. scrolls and stuff. She would literally just write with this pen, just squiggly lines on the just a solid black on these uh with these pens, and apparently they're usually stuck and all that. So I think it's a lot nicer way of doing things than just uh, getting a brush because, like, if you've got a shaky hand like me and not the gifted at mm. keep a straight hand, then uh, it's stuff like that is usually kind of godsend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did some, yeah. I did some free freehand on some of my miniatures, and mm. it looked awful. But all I did was I got a black pen and outlined it by hand, and now it looks awesome. <laughs> so it just hid the entire of the edge of the. Uh, yeah, the, the freehand. Yeah. yeah, sometimes sometimes pen like this is good for just doing a freehand outline, mm. and then you can fill it in with paint or follow it, mm. or do it the other way around. Yeah, paint, yeah, because it depends on the pen as well. It, it, what what ink is in it? Is if, well, it's, yeah. if it's actually going to last or not? Mm. Well, this has lasted, I think, close to two years now. I don't know what pen it was, but it was a fine liner of some sort, and it hasn't browned or anything. Permanent pen. <laughs> as far as I can see, yeah. yeah, yeah I, wasn't um, it? Wasn't a biro. Put it that way. <laughs> I did one so on my uh, Help for Heroes <coughs> dreadnoughts. I wrote oh, Edic Heroes with what I oh, thought, yeah. which I thought was going to be the proper pen. Uh, I did a bit of research. I went to Smiths and <laughs> got this pen. I thought, yeah, p- perfect. So I, I wrote it on there. Woke up the next day and it, it all was like splodged out. Oh, so, no. <laughs> so I had to paint over it, um, and then I. Did it freehand with the paintbrush, and uh, I've not looked back really. I, I just I won't use a pen now. I've got nothing against people using the pens, um, but personally, I, I would I just wouldn't do it. I'd just ha- just go for the freehand really, and just mm. you know do it myself. Well, they comment said Gams had put up that video about um, painting with the pens, didn't he? Even did edge highlighting with a pen. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. So it definitely is a technique, um, and it is an option. But it's just something personally, you know, I'm just like into the painting so much that I would just rather just do it with the, the actual paint, you know, and a brush. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, re- personally. Oh, yeah, sorry, Craig, after you. I was just going to say, I've remembered what I used. Uh, it's um, CD pens, pens to write on the side oh, of the yeah. CDs. Oh, yeah. Very much and I'm just going to just hold it up to the camera. I'm not sure if it's going to show up, but that's basically how it, uh, how it comes out on. You guys can't see that, but hopefully the guys at home can. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so uh, I think that's why it's permanent because it's it's yeah. like fine liner and it's designed for writing on uh, on CDs. Yeah, I mean personally for me, I have always gone with the paintbrush. Um, freehand is only something I've been doing for the last month and a bit or so, and it was inspired yeah. because I saw uh, Nick's uh, Space Wolves, and I was like, oh, freehand looks really cool. When you put the decals and transfers on, there's always that sheen. Um, and I don't want to have to yeah. go out and get a matte varnish just for a sheen. And at the end, I think I would encourage to try freehand to people who don't, because it makes you better at just with your brush control. Yeah. Like, I've noticed that mine have gotten better as I do more. And there are some really dodgy freehand, like, letter C's on some of my stuff. Awful. But, yeah. but I know that because I'm doing it, I'm getting better at it and better. So I think hopefully that'll help with other techniques as well. Um, yeah. and it does make a massive difference you just look at Darby Conway's um, uh, Dark Eldar you know, from Fire Breathing yeah. Duck he's just done some freehand yeah. on the side of his raids and stuff and it, it makes the army look tenfold better you know yeah. and um, it's, it's his first freehand experience you know he's gone ahead, he's done it he's preparing to paint his Harlequins and getting used to doing some fine detail work and he's done a fantastic job and it is one of those things that you just have to go for it. Yeah. And yeah, don't be downhearted by the, but yeah, don't be downhearted by your first ever try either, because yeah. mine was it was god awful. It was it was actually crap enough for me to have to repaint over it. <laughs> but I bet it looked awesome times. from a distance. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I bet it looked awesome from a distance. Um, yeah, one thing, yeah. just just before we move off the subject of, of the pens too far, has anyone seen that pen on the internet where you basically put the end of it up against a colour and it will actually read the colour 
and then it will draw in that colour. Yeah. Anyone no. That sounds no. amazing. A while back. I think it's probably got the three inks inside, so it's probably got cyan, magenta, and oh, okay, yeah, yellow inside it, and it mixes it on the fly. Um, but yeah, using that for minis, you could just go into the shop and just push it up against <laughs> the paint pot of the colour that you wanted, and then draw it on your mini. Perfect. They would love that. Ideal. <laughs> You'd just be going in like 20 times a day. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Just looking at paint. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Literally just sit outside on a curb painting and then go back inside and go, right, black, that's the one I want. Thank yeah, yeah. Well, you just get, yeah. yeah. I, bet, I bet the cartridges to refill that with paint, though, are going to be an absolute fortune or ink or whatever they... Uh, yeah, no doubt. Whatever it's filled with. I would have gone with just buying the paint. Because <laughs> you'd also have to buy the pen. The pen is probably a couple hundred quid as well. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I just thought that was that was interesting because it uh, just just fits in quite well, I think. Yeah, of course. Uh, right, so we've been on for about fifty minutes now. Um, it's probably time to. Uh, I think we've covered that. Has everyone has everyone feel that they've said everything they wanted to say on those subjects? Yeah. All happy days here. Awesome. Right. Um, so I guess it's time to move on to. I'm not sure we've seen any questions, but hopefully we can uh, we can get some questions from the viewers. So, viewer questions. Right. Has anyone seen a question in the questions in the chat um, that they fancy like answering? I'll scroll back right to the beginning. Yeah, I'd scroll and look myself, but that's going to move the uh, the chat window. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's all right. I'm on it. Make uh, people very confused. Haven't seen any as of yet, but feel free to post some so I don't have to be awkward there, there and quiet is, while I read. Yeah, there is one here from Tabletop Warzone. He says, "Any techniques that people want to master?" Uh, wet blending, I reckon. I, I think it'd be nice to learn that. Was that calligraphy? To be able to get. Brush works well, sorry, airbrush works done without doing the airbrush bit. So, like freehanding, it'll look like standard from airbrushes. I would love to do that. Is that is that doable? Is that wet, wet blending or is it something separate? Uh, I think it's just another form of uh, freehand, but it's like you see some works. Right. Like, I remember seeing a while back this massive like vampire count dragon and a white dwarf. They had this massive banner, free-handed, and it was all gothic -y and... Very... Oh, I see what you mean. So instead of stencils is what you mean. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the local GW, they had a they had a dark Eldar Raider, and across the side of the Raider, even though it's only like two inches by two inches that what they were playing with, they painted this like really elaborate, like clown's face on the side of the, uh, mm. on the, side of the Raider, and it looked awesome. Yeah. So I think if I would pick... Nice. If I could pick yeah. one thing to master, it would be base coating. Because I honestly think that, I know it sounds ridiculous, right? But if you can get a, a really nice layered base coat, that probably makes a massive difference. Mm. Mm. And I don't really find that I have the patience to do more than one colour of a base coat. So, <laughs> mm. Yeah, I'm not one of those, like I say, I'm not one of those people that takes five paints to get up to the colour that, um, that I end up with. Yeah, I'm, go, I'm a one paint kind of guy. <laughs> one paint kind of guy. Paint, wash, paint. <laughs> yes, exactly. All the way. <laughs> wash, paint, dry brush. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I think there's. I think all of the techniques I'd like to get better at. To be honest, I painting. I, I tend to. <laughs> yeah, I tend. I tend to keep with what I'm used to, which is just just straight out painting colours, washing, and then and then highlighting. Um, I don't stray far from that. The only time I have really strayed from that is when I did the whole dry brushing base coat on these guys. Um, so getting better at the mall really is my my answer to that one. Yeah, what I would like to um, continue to, to do is basically freehand. Um, when I did my eagle on the uh, Comsa Gams as an American Marine, oh, yeah. uh, I found a little technique which actually, I don't know if anyone else uses this or not, but it seemed to work quite well. Um, I put the image into Photoshop. And then I, I changed, I can't remember the setting, unfortunately, but I changed it into one of the settings that made it the picture look like a painting. 
Ah, uh, yes. Where all the, the strokes and the colours were a lot easier than an actual image. Yeah. And I printed that off and I used that as a reference for, for the brush strokes and stuff. That's a really good uh, idea, yeah. yeah. So eventually I want to paint uh, some rhinos. And on the rhinos I actually want to have some warps on there. Um, not basic stuff that I'm putting onto the shoulder pads. I mean, like proper pictures of, of wolves. Yeah. So that's my ultimate goal. Um, wow. But whether I'm going to be able to do that, I don't know. But that's what I'm hoping to, to improve on or achieve at some point. Yeah. yeah, freehand for me. Just continue. Just up the game on the freehand, really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just, I just want to improve all over, really. Just um, uh, better airbrushing techniques i think and 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 just painting different types of miniatures you know i spent so long painting blood angels it's um yeah. trying to paint something different like the dead man's hand stuff and the alien versus predator stuff and the bloodthirster for example it's uh just different models kind of force you to use different techniques and different colors yeah as well yeah, yeah. Uh, just red so it's, yeah yeah well this is, it, this is it you know i mean look, flipping i've got you know 150 odd paints and you already sort of use 20 of them i think you just got one paint pot just just, yeah. just <laughs> one big red yeah blood red <laughs> that's, done red. that's it that's all you've got is that's all you own <laughs> that's true that's true i've yeah, got just, yeah yeah just <laughs> one shade of red <laughs> layered on top of layered on top of the black so it gives you different shades Absolutely <laughs> right. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. What do I use? I I use about five different reds to do my blood angels. But yeah, it's, wow. uh, but yeah, it, 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 I I do like painting different different types of things. But then I did that blood thirst, and that was red too. So I should have painted something <laughs> different. <you know? laughs> so, but but certainly the the dead man's hand stuff, like painting um kind of real world people, you know, rather than you know fantasy or you know sci-fi type stuff you know trying to get skin tones well and faces as well Fa painting faces is an interesting um kind of progression for me as well you know trying to trying to get that looking better make it more realistic and eyes yeah. can't do eyes and like you were saying with those pens we used to use those pens for eyeballs that was always quite quite handy but you know trying to develop that now using brush brush and paint instead you saying so, about yeah. the skin tones i have no chance to do in skin tones um, my art teacher, I believe it or not, it took A-level art, um, and my art teacher basically said, we were painting like um, a section of Michelangelo's, or we're doing it in pastels, a section of Michelangelo's uh, Sistine Chapel. So I took the nice. fella, the, I took the fella who's sitting on a cloud holding somebody else's skin in his hand, um, and basically painted the skin green, so it looked like the Incredible Hulk was holding like some <laughs> green fella's skin, it was awesome, but I... The important thing of that project was getting the skin tones right, but I had I had very little chance of getting the skin tone right. That I just gave up from the first moment and just said, right, he's going to be green because I can do it. <laughs> uh, just, just do the shades. Just do the shades. I'd be damned if I'm doing like yellowy, pinky, red, blah, the skin. Yeah. No chance. Yeah, yeah there's I, 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 green I there, it. isn't there? You do orcs, yeah, the green skin. <laughs> yeah, mm. yeah. Green dark elder. Yeah, my, my toe agreed. <laughs> Have you uh, got a favourite colour? Uh, <laughs> yeah, the logo for the channel is green. green. <laughs> well, you, you've only got one green paint as well. You? Well, yeah. Just wait until this place is green. <laughs> it will happen. <laughs> we've had... Um, is everyone okay with that answer? Because we've, we've had some, more, uh, some other questions that we can quickly go over. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, um, channels that we watch to learn new techniques. That's an interesting one. Um, I like the um, the GW painting videos. From All right. Duncan. Yeah, they're good. Actually, they're good. They're really, really good painting videos. So I must admit, they're really good. I didn't even know they were doing them. Yeah, for ages. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. Right. Yeah. You should, should watch them. At Duncan. Duncan at GW do, does some really good painting videos. All right. There we go. Uh, there was one. From, yes. from my, my side, um, I don't. Unless like there's something particular that I want to paint that I've not painted before, um, then I would just literally just YouTube it. So if I want to paint, I don't yeah. know, say, so, oh, I need to know how to paint bone colour or something. I'll just YouTube how to paint bone colour, see what pops up, watch two or three videos, get some ideas from there. I don't necessarily. I don't have like a go-to channel. 
um, I just I, I tend to see like get it from several points of view and then make my own mind up. Mm. I don't think I've ever watched a video to learn how to paint. I must admit, I've I've tried to watch. You good already? Just... Well, no, I've I've tried to watch some and just thought this is this is far too much work and just turned it off. Several, <laughs> where's my dry brush? To be honest, <laughs> yeah, where's my dry brush? And green paint. <laughs> when's when's the wash going to be used on this video? This is ridiculous. Um, it's not a good way to be, I will admit, but that is that is how I am, unfortunately. Yeah, like for me, I think especially for me, Night Lord stuff, because currently, and I think this is the longest painting project ever is Conrad Kurz because obviously I'm only I've only got one Primark and I want to do as much possible best to quality as I can with the uh, Conrad as well as accurate to the uh, background and stuff. I usually go to the apa the apathetic fish. Yeah, apathetic. He does a oh, yes. stuff. Yeah, he's good. Uh, do the blues of I think I learned how to do the lightning spots from him and all that. I'll admit like mine won't look as good as his because I think it's white paint problem. It's uh, the white paints are always either too thick or too thin. Yeah. So I just kind of just paint it on. From distance, it looks alright. When you look up close, it just looks blotchy as anything. It's like, yeah. Yeah, I used to that. watch this guy. Used to watch this guy called By By Painted. He was called, and uh, well, he still is. But he went paid paid only content, unfortunately. So I don't watch uh -huh. him anymore. But, but he's got a back catalogue of them. <laughs> back, yeah. That catalogue of videos, um, for some you know, that are still available for for, for free, but uh, yeah, he you know really good sort of simple techniques and a mix of airbrushing and paint brush as well, which is kind of what I'm trying to do myself. So that that was good for me. But uh, like I say, yeah, I'm like Nick in that respect. If I want to paint something particular, I'll uh, you know see if any anyone I'm subscribed to is is doing that kind of thing or just you know YouTube it Google it whatever you know just to sort of see you know get some techniques but like you um you know watching the the Warhammer TV um, painting guides they're you know they're, they're really useful really good and and simple to follow as well if you wanted to yeah you do get a bit on the back of the I mean you don't get techniques but you get the colors on the back of these boxes yeah don't you? but I mean, that's not very helpful in the grand scheme of things, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, if it's not green, right? No, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm sure they... I don't even think there's any green at all on this thing. I mean, what, what are they playing at? Ha! <laughs> okay, that's no way to paint something. I usually, like, try to... I watch a few videos here and there, but I always try and keep them with a pinch of salt, only because I think my painting style is more gritty and, like, darker and try to be more realistic at times, and I find that Games Workshop can be slightly a bit glow-in-the-dark at times, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just it's, kind of like a very bright... You're switching off and it glows. It's like making a little mini dubstep party in your, uh, in your home. <laughs> Oh. And we had uh, we've had several questions. One of them was about um, to airbrush or not, or is it airbrush or against? I'm a fan of it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Just quickly go through the lot of us. Yay or nay? It's uh, I'd like to for me. So yay. Yeah, I, I would like to as well. Yeah, I, I, yeah, certainly for priming and varnishing, and I'm trying to get better at at, at other stuff as well. Uh, varnishing, that's a good point, Nick. Um, um, have you ever? Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with out an airbrush. I can definitely see the the advantages for base coating because um, mm. I obviously had a few issues with the rattle cans. Um, <laughs> but I'm, I'm quite happy with my little paint brushes. All right. uh, Kim, I, I think for oh, sorry. sorry, what? Yeah, okay. I, I I have a lot I want to say about it, but uh, yes and no. <laughs> Okay, yes and no, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, <laughs> uh, meaning, uh, you can do a really cool stuff with the airbrush, but uh, the cleaning and everything, the work oh, so with that, I, I hate it. So, so just for big projects and just for basing and that sort of thing, if you... Yeah. Big projects where you have to do little cleaning as possible, I think is a... Right, yeah. Callum, you were um, interrupted, sorry. I, that's all right. I would not have been able to paint guard without it, so, yeah. Okay. I think it's yeah. a yay from me. I think I could probably have replaced the dry brushing job with uh, with an airbrush, to be honest. 
But that's only on the armor. I've still I've had to go in with a brush to and actually properly paint the skin and all the and all the metal bits and that sort of thing. So yeah. But, uh, but what you can do, you can do uh, you thin down your uh, whites, your mm -hmm. off whites, and you stray send it hit hit them from the senate, you know, oh, yeah, when you have yeah. paid for it. And then you put on uh, washes and then you get a really good um, it, it will look really good. Yeah, <laughs> yes. really. Fast. Yeah, I mean, certainly, yeah, certainly with those pain in the rear colours, you know, to, to paint with a brush, yellows and whites and stuff, yeah. you know, through the airbrush, like you said, Kim, you know, it is spot on. You'll get really nice effects, you know, with with those sorts of colours. But you know, that's a uh, you know something else I suppose to think about. One thing I didn't mention when we were talking about painting and paint techniques, I have actually got a mate, and his entire orc army was sprayed white and then painted with washes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The whole thing. So he didn't even touch an opaque paint. I think maybe he did yep. some silvers, but other than that, it was all down to the different coloured washes, which I thought was a brilliant way of doing it. And it's fantastic if you've got a massive army of boys as well. Yeah, yeah. It's all like I think said earlier, it's about just trying to find you, isn't it? Nice. Yeah, Fritz's nids are painted like that as well. All right. Just with washes, yeah. So it's a, it's a done thing, and I think it's, a, it's probably one of the fastest ways of doing it. It's probably one of the um, most forgiving ways of painting as well. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So like, for me, I've always thought about trying to do Nurgle Plague Bearers as sprayed white and then sepia wash everywhere to give it that gunky yellow look. Yeah. I think that will be quite nice. I mean, I've tried not saying it in the past, but when I look at sepia, it is the magical colour of all magic. Because every time like I've tried not using sepia, sepia Piers has always done the job for anything that I've put over. So it's like uh, I've got bronze here, and that's absolutely brilliant for like the gritty gold that I'm trying to go for for me night lords and stuff. Sepia right. wash over that gives it a lot of depth and just looks rust rusted, but not like orky rusted, where it's like uh, all, all that stuff. So I think uh, sepia is very good. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so the verdict's in. Uh, Kim has won the uh, beard of the show. <laughs> it's official. That's in. First person to go to comment on the old beard. Uh, I meant to actually have a shave. Not not like totally off, but take some of it off before this show, but I couldn't find my shaver. It's been hidden. Me too, man. Me too. Oh, <laughs> too much beard. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, did we have any other questions? Oh, has anyone ever been tempted to try? Uh, this is one of the questions. I think it was from uh, Tattoo for You. Was non-metallic non-metallic me metals? I'll get the words out. Non-metallic metals. Has anybody ever been tempted to do those? They too lazy. They look horrifying to me. Yeah, it looks really <laughs> difficult. <laughs> I am way too lazy. Yeah. <laughs> too lazy. Yeah. They make metal paints for a reason. Yeah, especially, yeah, especially <laughs> if they make metallic paints. Yeah. yeah. So, do you, do you think it adds anything to a model, or is it just bragging rights? It is probably bragging, bragging rights. rights. Bragging I, know, rights. I think it looks really <laughs> cool to be there, but uh, there is I think no the way problem that is, I The problem with uh, that is you have to look at it uh, in an exact angle. If mm. you're off, you will look really corny. Yeah, yeah. I can see your I point think. on that, yeah. Yeah. Mm. I thought that was oh. that was interesting because it seems that more and more people, especially when Grey Knights came out, just started doing non-metallic metals all over the place. Oh, uh, it seems to have died what? down again now. <laughs> Grey Knights is like I'm looking forward to starting some Knights Errant because I'm just going to be spraying the whole thing in metallic and just dipping it in a wash. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Get my dry not, brush out. I'm done. You not thought about doing them actually grey instead of silver? Because some people uh... just do them, just do them grey rather than silver. I kind of like the silver. Like when I was painting my Necrons, I managed to do 20 Necron Warriors in like an hour and a bit because it was just get the airbrush mm. out, do it all silver, wash it. And then, I, okay, I had a couple of colors I chose to apply as well. But I could honestly paint 20 Necrons to tabletop in like a, a 40 minutes because it's just all metallics. And then it's just give them all a wash. That <laughs> is uh, the wargaming dream for a lot of people, isn't it? I'm very lazy. Talk, talking about <laughs> metallic paints, um, Tamir, Tamir do a good range of metallic paints. I don't know if you, use, oh, yeah. you guys who use these ones, but they've got all sorts of different colour metallics and so on, so it's useful to I, do. I use their uh, 
powder, their pigments, the uh, the weathering pigments. Oh, weathering, I, weathering stuff, yeah. Yeah, I've never used their uh, The actual their paint. acrylic paints are quite good as well, but yeah, I, I've basically used their um, metallic paints. They have a nice, like like a bolt gun, bolt, a very bolt gun metal sort of style, they're very dark, sort of rifle, yeah. rifle metallic colour as well, which is good. Yeah. That's cool. Um, is it, uh, we've been going for about an hour and ten. Is it worth taking any more questions, or shall we say goodbye? Um, I, all the questions, nothing but the questions. <laughs> Forever, no sleep, just the <laughs> questions. Sleep is for the week. Yeah. Yeah. Do we still do we still have questions? Um, um, there's a couple, but I'm not sure. I can't I can't scroll up. I'm I'm happy to call it here. I mean, there's only a couple, so it should be all right. Go for it then. I, I I will do one thing actually. So instead of instead of just ending it right now, no more questions. But how about this? You should all try and do a synchronized bro fist into your cams. That I think we should do. <laughs> <laughs> this is so YouTube. Right. <laughs> okay. So who's, who's going to count this in? Yeah. I'll let you do it. Okay. So three, two, one. Oh, yeah, so synchronized. <laughs> yeah. We should, like, dance in water and stuff. <laughs> Was that interpretive dance? Or... <laughs> it, it, it can be. If you were to put me in the water doing that dance, I would probably swim in a, in a direction. <laughs> anyway, um, right. Uh, I think yes. we're going to leave it there. Thanks, everyone uh, in the chat for giving us your questions and for for joining in really it's awesome it's, uh, it's a lot of fun doing these videos and uh, it's done a great deal to to get everybody in the legion together i think uh, we've, we're getting more and more people involved and it's uh, nothing but goodness um yeah so thanks to you guys for joining me on uh, on the chat i think this one's gone off without any uh, technical hitches whatsoever which is a first yeah, yeah. So I'm Fantastic. really yeah. chuffed with that. It's been a nice, relaxed show for once, rather than me frantically trying to fix things. So that's been good. Let's all right, pretend and, uh... free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bastards. Right. Uh, I think there's not much left to say other than uh, yeah. Thank you very much for watching and bye. 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 Ta-da. Okay.